I am exhausted and I crave more than anything to be in my feminine energy, but my partner admittedly doesn't do responsibility, yet he sincerely wants me to treat him like a man. When I relax and trust, life falls apart. What can I do? A, to the person who left this comment on my video, thank you so much um, and thank you for watching. And B, I really want to answer this, uh, so forgive my gym clothes because I really felt called to answer this. It's a question that comes up for a lot of people, a lot of feminine women, a lot of feminine men. Um, and it's also a question that a lot of my clients come up with. It's a lot of, it's a big question that I had to actually deal with myself and I had to find the answer for myself. So as someone who has struggled in this space, my heart goes out to you. If you are watching this video, if it resonates, please like, share, subscribe, and uh, I hope this serves you. So I'm gonna start out by speaking to you more specifically, and then we're gonna kind of broaden out as to how you might be able to navigate this within the relationship, because really it all starts with you. Luckily, you've got the power of choice. So, First things first, when stepping into our feminine energy, if you don't feel like you can really step into that with, let's say your partner or your family, um, start by doing it in your personal life. Start by receiving in your day to day. So let's say you're in traffic and you get a green light. Go ahead and just say thank you. Thank you to the universe, thank you to God, thank you to the gods of green lights, thank you to the traffic gods, just a simple thank you and just go ahead and receive that. If you're out somewhere um, and your friend buys you coffee, go ahead and receive that. Thank you is a very powerful word and it can really not only remind the people in your life that you're grateful, which I know you want, but also it reminds you internally and your unconscious mind that you are receiving. And the more you get into the habit of receiving, I mean receiving everything, if there is a squirrel in a tree that makes you giggle, thank you. And you start finding things to receive, which is really just a, a fun exercise because it's gonna be great for your overall well being and your overall outlook. But again, what we're doing here is we're conditioning your mind to get used to receiving so that if nothing else, you can kick back and let the universe provide. You can kick back and let source provide. Um, so that's step one is getting your unconscious mind used to being in that pattern. And this is where we kind of kick it into the next phase of bringing it into the relationship. So a couple questions I might have for this relationship that I don't have the information on right now is, is your partner truly desiring to be masculine? And remember, masculine and feminine energy does not mean man or woman roles. Uh, what we're talking about here when we talk about masculinity is the desire to be a giver and provider and nurturer. Masculine energy is actually very providing, very nurturing. It's where we get that whole man goes off to work and provides for the family. Man goes out and protects his family. It's a very simplified version of what masculine energy is, but that's where it derives from. So if he's truly in his masculine and he's action oriented and he desires to be valued for his thoughts more so than his feelings, if he desires to be valued for the solutions he comes up with, um, if he likes being a problem solver, even at work, again, kind of start looking into if he truly desires to be a masculine male and maybe has just been conditioned out of it. Or is your partner more dominant feminine energy? And because energy doesn't necessarily relate to just male or female, it transcends gender. So there are plenty of wonderfully feminine males that, you know, might actually pair up with a more naturally masculine female. And they're beautiful relationships, but it's always about the balance. So I would start um, really kind of getting to know him and getting to identify, does he want the idea of the typical male treatment uh, when he is actually more of a feminine dominant energy, which again, you can still have great male roles and great male providers with that feminine energy, with that artist energy. It's a great artist energy, but check and see what truly is more natural to him. Because when we get in a relationship, we automatically tend to try to balance each other out. 
Now, when we're talking about a feminine energy and feminine energy friendship, it can be beautiful. There's a lot of insight, there's a lot of inspiration, there's a lot of true cherishing for our feelings, but maybe not a lot of action gets taken or not a lot of decisions get made. Or if you have a masculine-masculine friendship, you might get a lot of action, you might get a lot of this, but there might not be a lot of deep insight. There might not be a lot of inspiration. It might just be ideas and action, ideas and action, ideas and actions, and all of a sudden, it's not a very deep relationship. That's just one manifestation of what happens when we kind of get into a relationship with the same energy. Now, when it comes to romantic relationships, this is where it can get a little bit challenging because if you are a feminine dominant partner, and your partner is also feminine dominant, despite the conditionings of male and female, what often happens is the one with the most conviction in their energy will win, for lack of a better term. It's not really competition, but they'll win. And the other partner who has slightly less conviction in their energy or who, let's say it's a feminine-feminine partnership, the one who desires action more will often take on more of that action, which it sounds like you might be doing a little bit. Sounds like um, you might be taking on a lot of masculine to compensate for the lack of being able to be feminine. When it comes to trust, that is again something that is really individual to you and your relationship is this a really pretty healthy relationship? And this is just like that one little sticking point that's gotten a little bit too far and we're like, oh, now I'm exhausted. Um, if it's healthy, I feel like you might be able to talk to your partner and say, okay, here's the thing, I'm exhausted, honey. And I know that you desire to be treated as a man. And let's assume that he does actually desire to be a masculine partner and he is actually masculine dominant. He's just been conditioned like a lot of men have that men are taken care of when they get home, right? The martini at the door kind of mentality. So maybe he's just been conditioned out of his masculinity and maybe he's looking for maybe not responsibility, which again, I think there's a little bit of imbalance there from the tone of the comment. But again, I'm not gonna read too much into it because I don't know. But um, if he desires to be a problem solver, which is a masculine thing, then one of the problems that he might be able to solve for you is that you are not feeling safe to be your feminine self and to let him take on and take on some of these solutions. So in healthy relationships like that, where it's just a little bit off balance and the conditioning's been a little bit off, something you might be able to say to your partner is, hey honey, it would really make me feel loved and cherished if you could come up with the dinner plans tonight. Start small. I learned this the hard way. Do not start with the big things. Just before I got divorced, I tried one last ditch effort to um, trust my feminine dominant partner with sorting out the health insurance. Do not start with the big stuff, start small. Start with the, incon and the inconsequential stuff because it's gonna take them a little while to get used to stepping back into their masculinity too. So don't give them huge, giant um, planning or problem solving roles. Start small and inconsequential. So can you plan dinner tonight? Can you please, um, can you please come up with a solution to how we divide up the chores? Can you please come up with an idea for this? And just encouraging those little bits of masculinity in them without creating a huge pressure to all of a sudden drop it on them. Which again, I know that after a while you just get exhausted and it feels like you can't trust them. And that's a really uncomfortable state to be in. And again, my heart goes out to you if you or anyone watching this video is in that like Rig, I can't trust. I can't trust my partner. I can't, I can't trust myself to receive. I have to be the one that takes care of everything. If I don't do it, no one else is going to do it. And that is a loop that we get ourselves stuck in. So again, that's going to go back to practicing this outside of your relationship and getting used to asking others and trusting others with little bits as well, because it's going to strengthen your trust muscle.
because uh, a lot of times when we don't trust our partner, there's also a tendency to carry that out into the wider world, um, like into our work world. Um, and all feminine partners have to be masculine in the office, unless it's an artist or a channeling kind of um, job. Everyone is in their masculine at work. And that's not a bad thing because you gotta have the ideas, you gotta get the action done, you gotta take care of this, and then you know, receiving comes later. But try trusting others outside. And again, with very, very small things. You know, hey, if you pick the time and place to meet up, you you organize the meetup, you tell me when to be there and I'll be there. That kind of thing. Just super small, super inconsequential. That'll start building up your trust muzzle so that when you do decide to trust, you can trust small, trust small, trust small. And then when you do trust big, you'll have warmed up to it. Now, if your partner is actually more leaning towards the feminine energy, this is a little trickier to navigate because again, it can force one or the other partner to try to balance the relationship. We're creatures of balance. We crave balance. Even when we're out of balance, we crave balance. So if you find yourself trying to balance the energy in your relationship and trying to, again, get things done so that they get done, it will get exhausting. Now, the good news is we're constantly flipping back and forth. He is not without, if, if he is a feminine dominant partner, it's not that he's without any masculine energy. It's just going to take a little more effort for you to say, honey, I really need you to take the lead on this. Honey, it would really make me feel loved if you could plan something for me. Honey, it would really make me feel safe and loved and cherished if you could take the lead on this thing, if you could plan a solution. So it sounds like um, from the idea of doesn't do responsibility, um, that maybe, again, if this is an otherwise healthy relationship, this might be that he's thinking that, you know, he's got to do everything all himself. And that's not always the case. This is an opportunity for you guys to bring a little bit more partnership and a little more balance into it. Because as I'm sure I don't need to tell you, if you keep taking this on and taking this on and taking this on and nothing changes, it's going to get exhausting. It's going to feel like life falls apart the second you do try to trust because it's been in that dynamic for so long. So that would be my, my advice is either A, no matter what, start receiving outside of your relationship. That sounded wrong. You know what, take that in context. <laughs> start receiving from the world. Start receiving from your friends, start receiving from your coworkers, start receiving from your family. Let it be okay for someone to buy you coffee. Let it be okay for somebody to plan the outing. Let it be okay to ask for them to plan the outing. And just start practicing that. And as you get more comfortable with that, you're going to get a little bit stronger in your feminine energy. And it's going to feel more comfortable bringing that into your relationship. Now, again, in a healthy relationship, you might be able to figure out that, ooh, maybe he really is craving to be masculine, but has been so conditioned that the man goes out and works and gets a paycheck and doesn't do squat in the house or doesn't do squat to maintain the relationship and the women are just supposed to manage all emotions. He might just be heavily conditioned. I don't know. That's something that you're going to have to ascertain and that's something that you're going to have to discover through how well you know him, how, um, you know, different conversations and seeing what he desires. How does he desire to be valued? Um, does he desire to be valued for his ideas and his solutions? Or does he want you to nurture his feelings? Does he really want to be a giver? And he's just been so conditioned out of it. Does he want to be a provider? And he's just been so, you know, conditioned out of it. Or um, is he actually more feminine dominant? I think the doesn't do responsibilities part of that comment kind of uh, indicates that you guys might need to chat a little bit more deeply about what a relationship means to both of you and what does responsibilities mean to both of you. Because um, here's the thing, you do deserve someone who 
desires to give to you. Masculine or feminine energy, we all desire to give to the ones we love. We all desire to take care of the ones we love in certain ways. I, as a feminine partner, desire to be there for my man's emotions. When he's having a rough day, I'm like, bam, gotcha, babe. All right, come here, sit down, let me scratch you back, okay. Uh, you don't have to talk about your feelings, but I, I know that's what we're working on. But what does a relationship mean to you? And what does balance mean to you? I'll tell you this. It took me a long time to get there. It took me a long time to actually trust. And for myself, my relationship did not work. Again, I don't know your relationship. It might be perfectly fine. It just might need, this just might need some communication. Um, but for myself, I was not strong enough in my feminine energy to balance out with his. And I always found myself taking care of his emotions. I always found myself not only taking care of the masculine side of things and taking care of the action and the planning and making sure things got done, but I also found myself oh, taking care of his emotions and it was not healthy for me. That was a toxic relationship. Um, so that was not, that's not an accurate skew of an otherwise balanced relationship. I just want to clarify that. But this seems to be a really good moment for you to communicate with your partner and really see what this means to them. And I will encourage you that if they are not aligned with you, that you really take that into consideration. If they are aligned with you and it really is a healthy relationship and just needs a serious whew, mental shift for both of you to kind of be more of what you want to be, then great. Go ahead and give them the grace and give them the patience. But discernment and deciding what is right for you and what gives you energy. Because again, remember, relationships are not meant to be this giant battle. Relationships are not meant to be a drain. Relationships, really, the reason we have relationships as humans is to be that fortress that we rely on when the rest of the world gets crazy. Whether it's friends, family, romance, business, partnerships, those relationships are meant to hold us through and be those safe spaces for us when all the world gets chaotic and all the shit hits the fan. So if you're finding, and this goes to anyone, not just the commenter of this post, because again, I get this comment from so many people and I just wanted to address it and speak to one person in particular because that's what I was feeling today. But to anyone who's watching this video, discernment and the notion of what is a fit for me and what is not, what gives me energy, what takes away my energy, what makes me feel like the best version of myself more often than not versus what is constantly draining me and turning me into something that I don't wanna be. Discernment is not judgment. It is perfectly okay to love someone and recognize that maybe we are not the best fit. And again, I'm not saying that this is what has to happen. This is not my advice for this particular video, for this particular person. But I do just wanna throw it out there that when you use your discernment and when you choose to follow what is most authentic to you, your soul's not gonna steer you wrong. So uh, my heart goes out to you and I'm sending you all the love in the world because it's not a comfortable place to be and it's a decision that really only you can make. Um, yeah, I, I, again, just sending you all the love in the world and uh, thank you so much for watching and I really appreciate the time and energy that you shared with me. So I hope this helps. Happy healing.